added bonus as well. It may put a crimp in the dating life there, but either way, Philip Lindsay, I get a feeling, will be just fine living with his mom and his dad. I'm not going to touch the dating life part of it, but I'm here for him living at home. Sure. Home-cooked meals, laundry. Hey, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. I love going to my Save mom's house in the basement, the old gateway computer. I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Philip. Oh, gateway cow computer. Hell oh, yeah, the cow box. Is that a Midwest thing? I think my family has I definitely had it. Too. Cows or computers? Yes. Not a cow. <laughs> All right, great stuff, Phil <laughs> Selva. As always, we'll talk to you in a little bit. More highlights from Chiefs Rams just ahead. But every Tuesday, we like to share what we learned from the last week of football. We're two days away from week 12, so we got to get to what we learned from week 11. Uh, I'll start us off, okay. not to be negative, gentlemen, but kicking struggles are real. We've seen teams combine for nine missed field goals and extra points within the final two minutes of games. What I learned this week is that no matter how bad it gets, though, you can always bounce back. That's all that matters. I was watching Rocky last week. Yeah. Rocky famously said, it ain't about how hard you're hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and... Keep moving forward. That's right. Rocky, <laughs> I believe, was talking to Bears kicker Cody Parkey. Let me take you guys back to week 10. It was crazy. The Bears might have gotten the win. Parkey took the L in this one, though. It was amazing. He missed two extra points. But what's even worse, what I'm saying is amazing, is that his four missed field goals on top of that, every single one of them hit the uprights. That is hard to do. Every single one. Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show used it as a joke huh. in his monologue. Unbelievable. He called it downright impressive it because it does not happen. Parkey said after the game that I don't think I've hit the post four times in my whole life and I've been kicking. <laughs> for about 15 years, so it is almost comical. All week long, as you can imagine, the pressure building. They've got the Vikings, a huge game. I'm calling it the defining game. I'm moving in with the boyfriend if they win this game. That's on his shoulders. And there were reports that he left a practice facility, which is near Lake Forest. Yeah. How long does it take to get out of, down to Soldier Field in a weekday? At 40 minutes, 45, probably 40, longer. Maybe a little bit longer. It's about an hour drive down there to practice. He wanted to go out there and kick field goals, sort of get out of his own head. Mm. I guess the stadium lights came on. News choppers, yeah. of course. News choppers. This yes, they're coming in. They're like, what's going on here? They're looking at it. So can you imagine standing there kicking while there's just choppers crazy. over your head? It's yeah. paparazzi. Wild. Yeah, like Jennifer <laughs> Anderson's wedding. But he got his work in <laughs> somehow unfazed. Fast forward to Sunday night, bright lights, Alan Chris, all the pressure in the world. What does he do? He went three of three. Hit the field goals. He helps the Bears clinch the game over their division rival. And you got to love Nagy here. He could have gone for it. It was fourth and four. He puts all the trust in the world in his guy. And we all know here at the breakfast table what happens when the Bears get a win. Oh, club down. Club down. Club down. This makes it so funny. Hey, Trey Burns. Say that special team. That's incredible. That's what I learned, you can always bounce back, and he saved the day. That's, That's awesome. awesome, Kay. Uh, Cody Parkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Club dub. Uh, the Redskins, 6-4, and four, and atop the NFC East with a tiebreaker over the Dallas Cowboys from their Week 7 20-17 victory in FedEx Field. And yet, I can't find anyone in America. I can't find anyone else at this table. I can't find anyone willing to say that they are still the favorites in the NFC East. And I get it. A quarterback that you're paying $111 million goes down, and it's easy to run far, far, far away from that team. But if I have learned anything, and not just this week, but in years covering the NFL, it is that you never count out a backup quarterback that the locker room believes in. And if you need proof, how about this image right here? <laughs> oh, my God. How soon do we forget? Carson Wentz last year was an MVP candidate. He went down in week 14 in the midst of a season that was twice as impressive as what Alex Smith was having in Washington. And yet, everyone fleed from the Eagles bandwagon like rats scurrying out of a Philly Metro Station subway car. Nick Foles not only had the faith of his coach last season when Wentz went down, but he had the faith of his teammates. And a few regular season victories led to even more faith from the city. Foles, who had no better in NFL career and was making far less money than Colt McCoy is right now, 
led the Eagles past the Giants, past the Raiders, past the Falcons, past the Vikings, and eventually past Tom Brady and the Patriots. Nick Foles was not enough for you? Okay. I mentioned the Vikings in there. They were a middling 3-2 and two team when Sam Bradford was ruled out for at least the following few months. And who comes in? So Case true. freaking Keenum. A lifetime backup and the definition of a NFL journeyman. He came in, he threw that team on his back and won 11 of 13 games, including a playoff victory in which he completed arguably the most memorable moment in Minnesota sports history. <laughs> Keenum started camp having never met his head coach, never met the offensive coordinator, having never Never met most of his teammates, and yet they rallied around him, and the Vikings found themselves one game away from a Super Bowl. Tom Brady did it in New England. Jeff Hostel yes. did it with the Giants. Hell, even Doug Williams did it with this very franchise in that very city. Backups do come in, and with the support of their locker room, they can take teams to the promised land. I'm not here to say that Colt McCoy will outthrow Aaron Rodgers or will outsmart Drew Brees or outrun Cam Newton. And I know Colt McCoy is not the two quarterbacks we saw on Monday Night Football, Mahomes or Goff. But the Redskins have kept Colt McCoy on the roster for five years now. Mm. They are paying him $3 million this season, mm. and they opted to re-sign him this offseason to an extension when they very easily could have moved on for a cheaper, younger option. I talked to coaches around the league. Sean McVay thinks the world of this guy. He was with him in Washington. Kyle Shanahan thinks the world of this guy. He was with him in Washington. And I know Jay Gruden does too. But most importantly, if you read the quotes and you read the headlines this week out of Washington, the locker room believes in Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy may not be the best quarterback in the NFL, but guys with a far lot less working in their favor Ooh. and a far lot less experience with that team have done even more. So I learned this week that even though we've learned time and time again to not count out a beloved backup, we seem to do it every single year. Colt McCoy, I've got your back. Go shock the world, even if it shouldn't be so shocking at all. Let's hey. go, Colt! Now